In this video, I'm gonna show you how to cut a plastic switch plate cover. Find out how, coming up next. What's going on, folks? Kendall here with Benoso Pros and Joe's, helping you simplify the renovation and remodeling process. On this channel, we do hands-on product tooling reviews, as well as renovation tip and strategy videos like this one. If you're interested in renovation, remodeling, repair, home maintenance, or real estate, then subscribe because the content on this channel is for you. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing and demonstrating how to cut or trim a plastic switch plate cover. Now, this is a common thing that you have to do when you're doing renovations, particularly in older homes and sometimes even in new construction, when you have an outlet or a switch plate or a switch that is in the way of something that you're installing on the wall. Usually it's going to be some type of cabinet like kitchen cabinets or you're going to have a bookshelf that's built in or something like this right here, which is a bookshelf with cabinets, and you're trying to work around what's already here, and you're trying to get a clean look without having to go back and do some type of major modification to any type of woodwork that's already existing. So what I have right here is a bookshelf that has been recently painted, and as you can see, we've got a new switch installed, but we do not have a switch plate cover. And the reason for that is simple. The distance between the center of the plate to the wall is shorter than the width of the plate. And so we're gonna to have to do some modification in order to make this work. We're gonna get through this, I promise. There is definitely gonna be some math, so get your pen and paper out, as well as your tape measure. We're gonna go through all the things you can use to do this type of project. I'm gonna be using a shear method to cut through my plate. You can also achieve the same or similar results with a razor knife. I'm using shears, but the main thing that I wanna get across to you is how to measure off so that you can do this. Also, when you're gonna be doing this at home, you wanna make sure that you're using a nylon switch plate cover. Don't get the cheapy weepy ones because those are probably gonna crack before you can even get them out of the package good. So get the durable, unbreakable nylon kind of flex easily. That's what you wanna use for this type of project because we're gonna to have to put some pressure on this thing to be able to cut through it properly and make it look the way that we want to. Also, I would advise getting more than one. I would get at least two. The method that I'm gonna show you today actually uses two different plates to get the exact fit that we want, but you may be able to get it done with one depending on the exact setup that you have in your particular scenario. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. These are the ones I'm talking about, by the way, in case you were wondering, they're cost about 60 cents in my neck of the woods. So this is the ones that you want. As you can see, they flex pretty easily and that's the one that we want. So as you can see here, we've got a switch that is very close to the wall here. And the problem area is essentially on the left side where it's against the wall. And so the main thing we wanna do here is to be able to shave down our plate on this side so that it will fit, jam up against the wall and we'll be able to use our switch regularly. So the first thing we wanna do is jump into the math. So the first thing we wanna do is get out our tape measure. And the first thing we wanna do once we get it out is to look at it closely. We wanna get a good understanding of how this tape measure is set up, particularly down here on this end because this is where we can easily make small mistakes. So if we look here, the first thing I wanna tell you is that we're looking at inches here. This is one inch, two inch, three inches, okay? And so with regards to inches on a tape measure like this, each one of these little tick marks is one sixteenth of an inch. So 16 sixteenths is one inch. So there's 16 tick marks in between each one of these numbers. So when we go from one, to two, to three, there's 16 tick marks in between each one, including the 16th, which would be the beginning of the next inch. That's important down here on this end because as you can see here, there's a little bit of a gap here and this piece kind of moves around a little bit. But if you look closely and you measure off, on this side, there's only 15 ticks. So there's not 16 ticks on here because there's one missing because normally there would be one right here in this gap. So don't get confused by that. And if you need to, you can always just count back this way to get to the number that you need. As I said, we're gonna be working down here on this end. So it's the main thing we wanna keep in mind. So the first thing we wanna do is take our switch plate out of the packaging. So the first thing we'll do is that. So let's go ahead and bust this thing out. When you take your switch plate out, you wanna make sure that you set your screws aside so that you don't lose them. Look at that one, it's already kind of marred there on the front of that screw, hate to see that. But in any case, you wanna pop out your screws and set them to the side. These are not as easy to just pop out. So I'm gonna back these out, I'll be right back. So I got mine started here with my 
screwdriver. And then we'll set that aside for safekeeping. So now that we've got everything the way that we want it, the first thing we're gonna do is look at this switch plate. And the first thing that we want to determine is gonna be how wide is the switch plate. And so we take our tape measure, we wanna measure across the back of this. And once again, it doesn't matter how you measure it, but you wanna make sure that you're measuring consistently. So if you've got this piece like this, like mine, if you can see this closely, you can see that it's moving. So I wanna make sure that when I measure that I've got it pushed in or pushed out, but I need to be consistent with each one of my measurements. So I'm gonna have mine pushed out. When I'm holding this in place here, you can see that my width is three inches and then we're almost in between tick marks there, but we'll say that this is going to be three and two sixteenths inches, okay? Because that's three, and then we've got one here, and then two ticks over is actually slightly further than the width of this. So we're basically between three and one sixteenths and three and two sixteenths. So the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and notate that. Write that down. So we will go ahead and write down that ours is three and two sixteenths, okay? And I'm gonna notate on mine that mine's actually in between. So I'm gonna write that on mine. Hopefully yours is not in between because that makes it a little bit more tricky, but we'll get through it. So I'm gonna notate that. So I'm between three and one sixteenths and three and two sixteenths. That is the width of our switch. We just wanna label everything here all right so you know what that is so so the next thing we want to do is kick our tape measure out and then this time we want to measure from the center of our outlet to the wall that's in the way we want to get in as close as we can ideally you probably want to turn off your power in here to this switch so you make sure you don't injure yourself or get electrocuted so here we got one inch here and then we've got one tick two ticks three ticks and again this one's kind of in between but we'll go ahead and mark this as being three sixteenths so the distance that i need to make is going to be one and three sixteenths and that is the distance that we actually have so so now we're going to come back with our tape measure and double check because it was easier for us to measure right here from the center with this pushed up against the wall so now we're just going to double check and make sure that our measurement doesn't look any different if we push it this way to make sure this is not easier for us. So now when I've got this jammed up here, this is looking like it's much closer to two sixteenths now. So we'll make this three and two sixteenths. So remember when we were working over here before, I had both measurements there. We're gonna circle this as being the three and two sixteenths. And so now this is the width of the entire switch plate. So remember that we only need to have half of that. So half of that is going to be 1.5 is half of three, right? So 1.5 plus one of these two sixteenths, right? And so because we have 16 tick marks, so it's 16 sixteenths equals one inch. That means that half an inch is eight sixteenths. So 1.5 inches is one inch and eight sixteenths so we need to add one more for half of the two sixteenths which gives us one inch and nine sixteenths inches so we'll write that in right here one inch and nine sixteenths and this is just half the switch okay and so now we come down here, we'll draw a little line, and we can see already that our difference is actually six sixteenths, okay? So we have a difference of six sixteenths from what's there and what we need. So now that we've done our math there, we have six sixteenths. This is the amount that we need to shave off of the switch plate in order for it to fit here. Now, there is a couple of things that we need to be aware of before we do this. One of those things, is that if this piece of wood right here is not completely straight, if it's not level, 
this can throw this off. So the math that we're doing right now and what we're accounting for is we're assuming that this is straight. If it's not straight, then we may have some gaps here along the way, but we're going to deal with that. I've got a way to address that in a little bit. So for the sake of argument, we're going to assume that this is straight. We're also assuming that our box in the wall is straight. And we're also assuming that our switch is installed straight. Some of these things are easier to deal with than others. Trying to straighten out the switch in the box may be easier depending on the size of the switch and your overall configuration, but we're going to have to make some type of assumptions in order to be able to move forward with this type of project. So we're going to make those assumptions now, and then we're going to come back and make any type of adjustments that we can to make sure that we have a clean look before we get done. So we have six sixteenths is what we need to remove because our actual distance here is only one and three sixteenths inches. So let's go ahead and move on to the next phase of this. So for the next phase of this, you're going to need a switch and you're going to need a pen and you're going to need a pen that will write relatively easy, something that you can kind of at least be able to write or make a little mark on plastic so that you can notate some things. I'm trying to make sure I can get this one going good. So make sure that we can do that. Let me go ahead and get it queued up there. So we want to be able to make some type of little tick marks here on our, so if you can see that, I can at least make a little mark there. You can do that if you want to use some type of wax pen or something like this, that's fine. I'm using this pen. This pen will just wipe off relatively easily. So that's what next thing we want to do. We've got our switch ready. And remember that we're going to be shaving off six sixteenths on this one. Okay, so now it's time to transfer some of our mathematics here onto our switch plate cover so that we can go ahead and begin the process. And so remember that we've got to cut six sixteenths off. Now we're going to flip here. And on for my example, I'm going to be cutting from this side. So I'm going to flip my switch down this way and I'm going to measure like this. And I want to make sure that I've got this piece tight in here. And remember that we said that there are 16 sixteenths in an inch, which means that there are eight sixteenths and half an inch. And so if you look here closely, you can see that there are not eight sixteenths in this half inch because we've got the one missing. In order to keep this straight, what you may want to do is just count back from the half inch mark two ticks, which will be the equivalent of six since there's not going to be actually six there. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me zoom in real quickly and show you exactly what I mean. So without the switch plate, I'm going to show you here on the tape measure. So if we look here, you can see that this is half the inch, which is eight sixteenths. But if we look here, there's not eight ticks. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's only seven, even though my finger fingernail is here on the eighth tick, there's a tick that's missing back here. So don't get thrown off by that. What you may want to do is start here from the center and count back. Since we said we're gonna be cutting it down to six sixteenths, we're just gonna count back two because we know this is eight, seven, six. And so this is the sixth one right here. Hopefully you can see that, it's a little bit better. So that's the sixth one right there and that's gonna be the one that we wanna mark off. We're gonna transfer this onto our plate. So I've got my plate here. I'm gonna make sure that I've got this thing extended. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure that I get my mark transferred on here clean and easy to read. And so as I said before, this is 8 sixteenths right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and mark off. It's 8, 7, 6. So I'm going to do that. So you can see there I've got like a little bitty dot right there. Just want to make sure that I don't smudge that off. And then I'm going to flip it over on this side, making sure that I'm marking it off on the same same side there so it's on this side so i'm going to mark the same thing over here on this side and i want to mark off my six sixteenths on this side as well and i'm just going to start with a little dot here so i make sure i got it straight here it's going to be a little ticklish to hold up there um, you can do a better job at home since you don't have to negotiate around a camera and stuff like that so i've got that like that Put this pen over here, and then I'm gonna mark off here. I think I got that. I think I got that right. Let's just double check, and if you don't get it right, just go ahead and just wipe your smudge away clean, and then go back and redo it again. And so now, 
I'm looking here. So that's eight, seven, six. So now, so I've got one tick there, and then I've got one tick there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some tape. You can use whatever type of tape you want. I'm gonna use blue tape. And essentially what I wanna do, I'm gonna put my plate down there for a second. I'm gonna tear off a piece of tape. That's really probably too much. Tear off a piece of tape there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask off the portion where I'm gonna be cutting. And I basically want to put my tape right here along the line that I want to leave on my cover. And so I'm going to put this on right here. And I wanna make sure that I've got it on here straight. That's the main thing. And the wide tape is a little bit easier to do this with because it doesn't kind of get out of whack as easy. So I'm gonna take this and I wanna get it jam up on here. So I've got that there. And I wanna get it just over the edge of my mark there. I wanna move that one up just a little bit. You can adjust this thing if you need to. Just make sure that you don't twist the tape. And so now that I have it like this, I wanna make sure and push any imperfections out. And I wanna make sure that I've got it completely smooth on there all the way across. So now I've got it smooth, work out any imperfections there. And essentially what I'm gonna do now is just cut along this line. There are a few things that you have to keep in mind when you do this. Let me get my shears and then we'll go through the next part. So now I've got my shears and I just wanna kind of show you what my setup is. I like to start on this side, but I'm right-handed. And so I wanna just kind of slowly but surely bring my shears down. Now you've gotta have strong hands and fingers to do this, uh, strong forearms to be able to cut like some shears like this. These are real gnarly looking, but these will get the job done because they're still sharp enough to be able to make this cut. Uh, we're just gonna work very slowly. And essentially what we're gonna try to do is cut right along this line here and leave the tape on. So we don't wanna cut any of the tape off at all. We just wanna leave the tape line on there. And so I'm gonna start here on this end. Remember as you're doing this, that the most ticklish part of this is gonna be when you get started, because this is where you're most likely to have a crack. And so you just kinda of wanna work your scissors in here to get around this little edge here, because basically what we're trying to do is negotiate this little piece right here where it kind of curves. We don't wanna break it in the curve. We just kinda of wanna cut through it. And so you may have to kinda of just work it a little bit. This is a nylon plate cover, and so it does give a little bit more. And so now, I've got it going, I've got it going, and we just wanna keep keep working it, keep working it, keep working it, and keep cutting. Now, once you get to a certain point on this, it may be easier to bend this out a little bit, but just be careful because you don't want to distort the placement of your tape here because that's gonna affect how this fits. Now, you heard that crack, right? So I've already, I'm already messing up, <laughs> but, I'm gonna keep going. I don't think there was anything major that's gonna affect what we're gonna be doing next because um, we've got a few more steps to do with this. And as I said, this is gonna be a two plate method. So now I've got that bent that way and I'm gonna try to bend this over slightly just so that I can get my blade in here further and cut straight. And so now I'm still in here, still in here. You hear all that cracking. Hopefully that's the part that we're throwing away. And so it is, that's the little piece there. So as I said, we just wanna be very, very careful here. And uh, we're just trying to bend this away enough just so that we can get our scissors in here far enough to keep 
cutting. And this is gonna be the ticklish part right here because we're getting close to the edge. As you're working this thing, if, you're, if your hands are not that strong, that you just want to cut in a very little short burst instead of trying to cut all the way through. Another thing to keep in mind as you're doing this is that you want to be careful on the back side because you're really more likely to cut and break off this piece as you're finishing than you are when you start. So I'm going to try to bend this thing a little bit this way. I'm going to hold it on this side so I don't mess it up too much. And then I'm just going to kind of gingerly kind of gnaw at this and there it is so now we cut that off now is the moment of truth we've got our shaved down plate and let's see if this is going to fit properly so i'm going to take my tape off now for the moment of truth to see exactly what we've got and just so you can see this closely i don't mind showing my work so we can see here you can see that my cut may not be 100% super perfect, but it's not raggedy at all. And I'll even turn it that way so that you can see it. It's pretty clean. So we're not gonna have an issue there with it being rough. I can rub my finger along here. There's no jaggedness. Now, if you choose to use a razor knife to do that, you can, but typically when people use a razor knife, they have to try to score and go back over the same area more than once. The scissors allow me to just place my blade on there once and then snip through and keep it clean. And so that's what I've attempted to do here. So let's go ahead and see if this is gonna fit properly. Let's just go ahead and just dry fit it first and just sit it up here and see. And as you can see, it seems like it's gonna fit okay. Uh, I won't know 100% sure until we go ahead and put some screws in there. Another thing that I like to do when I'm working with these is get my plate in place first and then line my screws up and then i like to try to get my lost one right there i like to try to get the screws started by hand because that will help keep everything straight if you can start them with your fingers then you're less likely to be forcing them in there in a way that's not perfect with the screwdriver that's also why i use a small screwdriver for these type of projects. So now I'm screwing that thing in there. Looks okay, pretty good. There we go. And so you can see that now it's pretty clean. Now I've got a relatively consistent trim line here so that it does not look bad. Now, in some instances you may have a scenario where you may have a wider gap up here at the top than at the bottom or vice versa. Um, even though this actually looks pretty good to me, I will at least go through the process of showing you what I would do next if my gap was too big here and I wasn't willing to settle for the way that this looks now. So let's do that next. So let's say that I'm looking at this install and I'm saying this looks pretty good but I'd really like it if I could have no gap in here at all. And so what I'm gonna do is look closely at what I've got here and kind of determine where the gap lies. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you've got your switch actually adjusted here in the box in the wall, jam up the way that you want it to make sure that you can't just adjust the switch itself to be able to remove some of that looseness here uh, or the gap here that you see here. So if you can't do that, then you jump to the next phase of what I'm gonna show you here. So I'm looking here and what I would generally say from looking at this is that it looks like my gap up here at the top is almost perfect, but as it goes down, it kind of gets a little bit wider here. And so, I want to probably look at the how much more I could leave on here. So we cut off 6 sixteenths on both ends of this thing. And so it may come out better if I cut off 6 sixteenths. Yeah, 6 sixteenths at the top. And then only cut off 5 sixteenths at the bottom okay 
So it's important to note that it's difficult for us to be able to, to get to this point so we can do this type of math without actually going through this process because now that we have a switch on here, this serves as our template and we can look at the way that this fits and determine what's wrong with it and what needs to be adjusted with regards to how we measured and how we cut. And so the next thing that we wanna do is take our next switch and we're gonna try and go a second time with this. So we will remove this first and then we're gonna go back and try again with the measurements that we've just decided to make. We know how this one looks. Worst case scenario, we can install this one if we mess up too bad, but we're gonna try to make sure or give ourselves a second option that may fit a little bit tighter than this one. So we will sit this one aside and then we'll grab another one. So we'll go ahead and grab this package. We're just gonna go through this exact same process again. Make sure our pin and everything is good to go here. And we said that we're going to be cutting off 6 sixteenths. So we will measure that here. Remember we're measuring from here. So we already said that this is eight. This is eight, seven, and then that's six right there. And then on this side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna count back one more. Eight, seven, six, five. Okay. So now we've marked there. We're gonna set this down and make sure we don't smudge our ink. And then we're gonna tear off another piece of tape here. Same thing. We basically just want to try and bridge this gap here between these two dots. Come on, come on, come on. There's one. And I'm not pushing mine down yet. I just want to get my ends in place and then I'm going to adjust these to get them exactly where I want them. So there's one. And if we have to err on the side of caution, I'd prefer to shave a little bit or leave a little bit more on the versus cutting too much off because remember that when I adjusted mine before or maybe I didn't do it on camera but I want to decide or determine how much space I have or how much wiggle room I have in this switch on the wall because when we unscrew these screws here on the top and bottom that are holding it into the switch plate the switch should be able to move left and right even if it's very slightly and so we want to take into account that type of play when we're cutting our plate here because we may have more ability to move it one way than the other. This switch, if I'm not mistaken, is pushed jam up against this wall. And so that means that if we leave a little bit extra on here, we can always adjust the switch and move it over a little bit to give us a little bit more uh, room here. So now we've got this one taped off again for our second time. As you can see here, I've kind of put tape over the edge of my marks here and so now we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to grab our nasty looking scissors here and we're going to go right back at it so let's see if we can get this thing started right here on this thing and i'm just like to kind of slide it as i said and kind of gnaw at it initially to try to get it started so make sure that i don't break the plastic right here okay as I said I want to kind of try to 
bend that down a little bit. I didn't have such huge shears. It may work a little bit better, but the shears, the size of the shears, I believe, helps us to do what we need to do. And I notice I'm bending this down well behind where I've cut to, so I'm not running the risk of causing my plastic to flex there and bow out because I'm already way up here with my cut. So I want to keep cutting, keep cutting, keep cutting. As you can see, I'm taking small, small bites at this thing, small bites. And the same thing as what we're doing here, kind of want to just kind of gnaw at it to keep from breaking this plastic here. Because remember, this is where we get wide again, right here, or we kind of have a curve here. So we don't, we want to make sure that we don't push down on this and cause this to just crack out and flatten out. We actually want to kind of mash through it, essentially. And the sharper your scissors are, the easier this step will be. But you still want to be very careful here. Hopefully, this one will be perfect. So there we go. Got that off there. Okay. So... This is our second attempt. What do you guys think? You think this one's going to fit better? You think it's going to fit worse or the same? I hope it fits better. So I'm going to peel that off again. Kind of, kind of clean that up a little bit. As I said, my scissors have been used for all types of stuff. So I thought I'd clean them up decently, but we'll be all right. We're just kind of. Same thing here. I'll let you see this one too. It's still clean along the edge. So you need to clean that up a little bit. But yeah, the edge is still clean. You can see here, me may be able to see that this one is not completely straight. It kind of veers this way. So we'll go ahead and put that up there and see if that fits any better. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. So let's go ahead and start putting these screws in here. Let me wipe my fingers down real quickly. Okay, back to work. I also said I was gonna wipe my switch plate down real good. Gonna dry it off real quickly. All right, so now we've got switch plate. Gonna just kind of push it into place right there for just one moment. And then we're gonna try to get this thing started by hand. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So that one went in easier than the other one. So we've got that in there. And so let's go ahead and Snug these things up. I'm honestly not sure that that's any better. It really looks about the same to me. It's still clean, um, but I can't say that I feel like that fits any better. It looks like that's probably as good of a fit as you could probably hope to get on this. You've got a little space in there. So let me know what you guys think. Um, hopefully this will get you through being able to do this on your project. Okay folks, we about got this one wrapped up. Hopefully you found this informative. If you've got alternative methods and techniques for cutting down and trimming switch plate covers or outlet covers, then let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.